my goodness. United. <laughs> I don't need to fly right now, really, promise. All right. We are on. Yay. 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 Amazing, amazing, amazing morning. Wow. I wanted to make sure that I would um, follow this just in case there are people that would be Yes, we're in just in case people would be, um, you know, tuning in and they would have some questions as well, right? Okay, beautiful, powerful people of the world. You know what? I forgot to actually put the light on. That's why it's not so bright right now on my face. <laughs> but who cares? It's too late now. We're live. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, beautiful, powerful people of the world. Today, it's very exciting because we're going to be um, talking about something that not a lot of people will actually want to expose themselves to it. You know, there's always quite a lot of um, the, these things that we go through that we always want to just go and hide. But the thing is, the more you expose it, the better it becomes because then you are able to help other people to come out of where they were at, you were at before and, and encourage them to say, oh, you know what, if I, if she was able to do it, I'm also able to do it. So today, poverty to prosperity, just like what God promised. This is what we're going to go and talk about the journey of Miss Beautiful. Um, Melody, I want you to just say hello to her. She is so amazing. Please say hi to all our audience. Thank you, Melody. Hello, everyone. Ruth, thank you so much for having me along because I am so passionate about this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> This is something I love to talk about. And I can't agree with you more that when we bring to light poverty and those hard topics, yeah. because when we talk about poverty and we talk about lack, that brings up feelings of shame. And, you know, it's just kind of yuck and no one wants to talk about that. It's very vulnerable, right? Right. It's, it's hard for people to talk about, but I have lived in that place before in that place of lack of poverty. And so, um, yeah, super excited. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute before we get into that meaty thing. I mean, people would want to know about you, of course. So we would yes. want to first know who Melody is before Jesus and who is Melody now that Jesus is there. But just, you know, put it in a very short context because we want to go and, and really, you know, scrutinize and, and unlock some, some treasures from your experiences. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so we are we starting with Melody now or Melody before? Melody before. <laughs> Melody before. Okay, well, I, I guess I was 17 and um, I found myself pregnant. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where the story begins because up until that point, I'd pretty much grown up in church, had a very normal experience like, you know, many of our listeners today and had a great family, but mm -hmm. I found myself um, pregnant, married and divorced by the age of 19. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where I began my journey alone. Okay. At 19 to be divorced is a very scary thing. Yeah. To be responsible for a child is a very scary thing. And yeah. even kind of broader and beyond that, my whole life I've carried some really big dreams. Like mm -hmm. I always knew as a little girl that I was going to do big things for God, right? Yeah. I was going to change the world. I was going to, I was going to write books and I was going to help other people. And so in that moment, when I find myself at the age of 19, you know, living at one point in a barn, I've shared that story before, not, not even a house, a barn, right? Yeah. yeah. Living in, in the middle of a field. And so it was a barn full of rats and spiders and crickets living on food stamps having to go to that place from, you know, leaving my father's house and having plenty, literally, to sitting in a Medicaid office, you know, waiting for my handout. No one wants to talk about that. Yeah, it's a hard place. It's yeah. a hard place. You know, you're, I, I had no resources, or I felt like I had no resources. I felt very stuck, very wait, limited. 
wait a minute wait a minute when you because you were just 19 so does that mean you know when 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 they found out that you were pregnant were you the one that actually separated from the rest of the family or is that a choice or it was actually something that you know it was instigated by family that you um both- it was kind of a combination you know um i felt like I had to take responsibility for my situation. And so to me, that meant I needed to marry this young man and give it my best shot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I did, yeah. I really did. Like and any it, other teenagers. <laughs> right? You know, at, at 17, turning 18, I thought I could make this work. And yeah. um, my parents were incredibly disappointed and they were leaders in our church. My great uncle was the pastor. So it was really a setup for major disaster all the way across the board. Um, <laughs> it was the worst possible case. That I was in a private Christian school. <laughs> it goes on and on. I was the valedictorian. <laughs> you know, it, 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 I was. So, and so you're, yeah. you're a major, so you are a major topic for gossip and the entire <laughs> Christian oh, <dumb. laughs> It was bad. <laughs> Yes, it was, it was, and actually I had left my parents' church before I got pregnant and I'd gone to another church and the pastor actually called me in in front of all of the youth and they had no idea. And he announced to the entire youth group that I had sinned. And as a result of my sin, I was pregnant and this was what they should not do. Like I had no idea that was coming. That was traumatic. (laughs) I can laugh now. I was not laughing then. No. I was mortified. It was like the scarlet letter on my back. You can't make this up. You were the woman who came to Jesus and touched the cloak. Yeah. The first stone, girlfriend. Yes. Yes. Oh, we should have talked about this topic. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I could talk about this. So, yeah. So it was my reality, right? Uh-huh. You know, I had lost my family. I had lost my security. I had lost my provision. I had chosen to go into this marriage thinking that it was going to work, maybe knowing it wasn't, but I tried and it was a failure. It was an epic disaster. And so here I am at the age of 19, all my dreams seem shot to pieces. I am sitting in the welfare office trying to get my diploma by GED. I was the valedictorian. I should have, you know, I was going to go off to college. I had dreams and here I am. And I remember the moment that I walked to my mailbox to get my diploma. It came to me in my mailbox and I sobbed, even though I should have been proud because I managed to graduate, um, you know, high school. I was sobbing because that's not what I had dreamed. That did not look like my dream. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's okay. I'm glad we can laugh about this. For those right now who are watching and you have a sister, a daughter, a cousin who is going through right now exactly the same devastation, a devastating, um, um, you know, um, news that you're actually pregnant, please don't despair. There's always a chance for renewal. There's always a chance for support. God loves you. Okay, whatever it is that you have done, and we cannot go back to wherever you're done, you've done, uh, whatever you have done. We, we we repent and we just come back to God. Okay, just come back to God. Ask God for help, and and we are with you right now, and we stand with you, asking God that you God will just you know re. He, he has already actually redeemed your situation right now and just care for yourself and your baby and I, we, we we are in agreement that you're going to have love support and family around you and if not god's still going to give you the right people where you're at right now so don't do anything drastic we know that it is actually something that you, you would feel condemned about but let listen Look at this beautiful woman of God, Melody, which is, I mean, we're doing this. Beautiful, powerful women is doing this so that you are going to be encouraged that you're not on your own and that there's always hope in Jesus' name. Yes, okay. Amen. And then Melody, go again. Oh, hallelujah. And then yeah. so going through the stamps, you I'm sure you're fighting with your with the dad of your baby, right? Oh yeah. It was, it was awful. It was drama at the highest level. And 
all I can remember thinking was God, it wasn't supposed to be this way. Yeah. <laughs> like I knew that I had messed up and I knew that I had made a poor choice. And yet it felt in that moment that I had destroyed my destiny. Yeah. That I had literally just destructed everything that God had promised me, every dream that I had carried in my heart. And I truly believed that because of my choices, there was no redemption. Mm. There was no path out. Mm. Right. Whoa, and so that's that, very, mm -hmm. It's huge. I was, so I was poor in my, my, my thinking. I had a poverty mindset. It was, yes, I was literally poor, but I was poor in spirit. Yeah. And I was poor in just every aspect of my mm -hmm of my life that's, that's very interesting what you said that i felt like i destroyed my destiny did 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 you know everyone that you can never destroy your destiny and if if you would allow jesus to be your leader right wow that's right i mean that's very interesting that's a very interesting lie that you hear from the enemy all of us would hear that once in a while until now you know, until yes. I think you die, there would be a lie in our heads that you're you're no good. You 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 you've messed up, and so that's it for you. Oh my gosh, yes. that is such a lie. Go ahead, Melody. It is such it is such a lie, but that's where I lived out of. Absolutely. And so I I believed the enemy. He said, "You ruined it. You ruined your chance. It's over. So now you will spend the rest of your life paying your dues, working really hard to try to make up what you have screwed up." Right. Like you've made this bed and you will lie in it forever. And wow. I believed it. I believed oh, wow. it. And of course you felt all by yourself and alone and condemned by everyone else. You against the entire world. I mean, for a 17 year old to be, to be like a, a laughing stock and an example of such evil, that is cool. And it, that's the it was cruel. That's my cool. family was supportive, but the religious, some of the other religious voices in my life, um, sure. they, they were speaking out of a place of religion and a place of control and fear and manipulation. And I was so young that I didn't really know how to navigate those conversations. Yeah. I didn't understand my identity. I didn't understand my purpose. And I did not understand that God had a plan B because God always has a plan B and he has a plan B. -B -M -G. Yes. He has all the plans. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we didn't you know all began that you you started having hope. Where? Where did it all began? <laughs> well, you know, there's some key places, but one of them was so I lived, I lived in the barn. Mm -hmm. And it, it was a barn that my dad had used for his business. And he had moved his business to the city. And he said, Melody, you can have this, 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 it's kind of like a barn workshop thing. Right. I had a kitchen and a little bathroom. I mean, it was, it was okay. Right. It was in the middle of a hayfield, right. and so because we lived in the country, and so when okay. he moved to the city, he gave me the barn, and there was like a two-inch, three-inch gap under the front door. Right. So what would happen? All the huge wolf spiders and the crickets right. would uh -huh. run in, and so I would always have to fight all those critters. <laughs> and I can remember one day I was vacuuming up the crickets, like. I swear, I would get a broom and I would knock them off the ceiling in the wall. And then I would take the vacuum cleaner and I would vacuum them up and I would have to go dump them outside. And I was having a pity party and I was crying. And I said, God, why? I hate these crickets. I hate this. I hate this place that I'm in. And what I was really communicating, it was the frustration was about the spiders and the wolves. But the root of the issue was I was frustrated and bitter about my lack about what I didn't have, about the opportunities that I thought I missed, right? And so I began to have this conversation. And I remember so clearly in that moment of fighting those crickets that God said, you know, is this not provision? And I stopped I and he said, is there, a roof? <laughs> yeah. is there a roof over your head? And I said, yeah, there's a roof over my head. He said, do you pay, how much do you pay in rent? Nothing. <laughs> And so he said, do you think that you could be grateful for the roof over your head right. in spite of the crickets, in right. spite of the dead rats, right. in spite of the smell of dead crickets? Oh, that smell wait, takes wait, me wait back. By this, were you alone? By this, you were alone now, separated with your... with your. Yes, we were only married for a year. So I was alone with my son in the barn, the barn shop <laughs> house. <laughs> and I just remember that Holy Spirit challenged me to look again, look again. And instead of seeing what you don't have, 
see what you have. That's a key. That's yeah. a huge key. And not only look again and see what you have, but can you be grateful? Right. Can you enter into authentic gratitude mm. for what I have given you in this moment? And is it enough? Mm -hmm. It might be irritating. It might not be your idea of perfection. It might not look like your dream, but is it enough for now? I want to, I want to, I want you to go and, and, and talk a little bit more of that authentic, grateful, being authentic, being authentic in your gratefulness, because you see, you know, a lot of people, they, they, they tend to actually, you know, blame God for things, right? You know, oh yeah, whatever. Why did you allow this? But honestly, <laughs> um, honestly, it's your decision, you know, <laughs> but to get into that position where your heart is actually authentically grateful. Yes, that. What? It's huge because when, and what I would do, I would, I remember that I thought, okay, so how am I going to be grateful? Cause I really did like, we say yeah. be grateful, but in a practical way, what does that, what does that look like? Right. Yeah. Cause it's just kind of esoteric to say, oh, be grateful. So I remember I started to clean my house and every time I cleaned my little house, I would bless God. And I would thank God. Thank you, God, for these walls. Thank you that I have a door that locks. Thank you, father, that I have a roof that doesn't leak. Thank you for the hot water that comes out of these pipes. Thank you that I have a kitchen. Thank you that I have a toilet that flushes, right? Little things. I began to hone in on what I had and I began to be so grateful for it. And I began to bless it. I blessed that little house. I blessed that free barn. I blessed the fact that I had no rent. And let me tell you, God has taken me on a journey. And it's really interesting because the way that he has interacted with me from that place is always with houses, with apartments and houses. And he always talks to me in houses. And I have learned in my life that when I move, it's because I've gotten everything that I needed in that season. And it's, and he right. always like literally relocates me to another home. Yeah, so, it's, like, yes. it's like whatever, it's like when I, when I tell people, you know, bloom where you are, you know, it's really being present where you are and learning how to be satisfied with the Lord where you are, being yes. content with where you are. Because no matter what you do until that season, until you've learned the, in that season, whatever it is that you need to learn and accept, it's not going to work. You're like fighting the wind of what, ding, 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 you know? Yes. Unless you really get into that, you're not going to get into the real arena. You know? No, no. And you know, and that's what I like, I can remember. And it wasn't long after that. It was probably, I don't know, six months later yep. that I had finished my time at the community college. I was going to university and I was thinking, I didn't know how this was going to work. My father came to me and he offered to pay my rent on an apartment since I was going to university. And I thought, oh my goodness. And I remember I moved into a one bedroom, 500 square foot apartment, brand new. It smelled like fresh paint, Ruth. I thought I had, like, I thought it was heaven. I thought I was living in the palace. It was the Taj Mahal coming from that barn. And I was so grateful for that 500 square foot apartment. My little boy and I, we shared a bed. I didn't care. There were no spiders, there were no crickets. And no one had lived there. <laughs> and, and of course, I'm sure, you know, it has taught you to constantly just bless. You see, the more you complain, the longer, the longer you are in the wilderness. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> just like the, you know, the, the Israelites for 40 days instead of 13 days, they could have, but they, do, they didn't want to see the glory of God. They didn't want to see the goodness of God where they are. So therefore it takes a longer time. But you said the, the more you bless, the more you bless. It's so important what comes out of our mouth. The more you complain, the more you curse your situation. Situation. The more you bless the situation, the more God increases the blessing of the situation. Wow. Okay. So you, wow. Now you are in a nice one bedroom apartment with the love of your life, your baby boy. Is it a boy, baby boy, right? Oh my God. Yes. And then? <laughs> well, and, well, and then I really just began this journey with the father of of coming into my own, of taking responsibility and really owning my process with him. Now, was there still a lot of trauma and dysfunction? Oh my goodness. Yes. Okay. I was still a train wreck, yeah. but you know what? There was grace. God knew where I was. And that's just it. Like he doesn't expect us to do a complete 180 and to step into perfection and to know it all. He just needs us to come into gratitude, 
to come into obedience, to submit. And you know, what's interesting is he always will give you a strategy. Mm. This is the biggest way to break poverty mindset is just ask father for a strategy, right? Because if we think about, um, we think about the widow, right? In, in first Kings and Elijah comes to the widow and mm-hmm. she, he's like, what are you doing? And she says, well, I'm going to bake my last cake. My there son and I are going to eat it and we're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> right. She had such a poverty mentality. Like she's planning her death of her and her child. And all she sees is the lack. And he says, okay, well, while you're at it, make me a cake. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause doesn't God do that? He just always mm-hmm. asks us to give out of the place where we have nothing. Yeah. But listen, I want to know also how, how did you actually get into, you know, mastering your emotions? Because of course, you know, that that's number, I think one of the toughest uh, enemy we got is our emotion, right? God says, you know, guard whatever affection you have, guard, guard your heart. Otherwise it's going to really deceive you. So how, how did that, how did you, you know, tap the, the scepter of the Lord and put that emotion under your feet? Was it mine? How did you, how did it happen? <laughs> No, that's a great question. And, you know, I always, I had encounters with, with a father when I was very young and mm-hmm. I always tre- treasured those in my heart and I always had dreams. Okay. And so he would always take me back to the place where I had authentic connection and experience with him. Okay. And I wanted to be back in that place. Yeah. And so that's really what I was chasing. Like, God, how do I get back with you? How do I, how do I get out of this place of crazy emotion? I mean, I had an eating disorder. I had all kinds of problems. And Mm -hmm. it was, he just, it was just one step at a time. It wasn't complicated. It was trust me. It was walk with me. Mm. It was lean into my word. You know, I remember one year, all I could, all I could quote was one verse, you know, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, as I think it, how do I think I am? How am I framing up my life and my heart? What am I saying? What am I thinking? What am I meditating on? And I would consciously be aware of my emotions and how deceptive they are because our emotions are not the truth. Our emotions are so deceptive. No, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so it's just taking those thoughts captive and coming back into that place of truth and framing up what God has said about you versus what the enemy says about you. Yeah. And it's a decision, isn't it, Melody? You have to decide that actually your feelings is not the truth. Even if it's the reality, even if it's so real, like really it's real. But honestly, that's not the truth. The truth is what the God, what God promises in the word. If he yes. says that he's with you, even if you feel alone, he is with you. Yes. Even if you are, you, you are in despair. If God says he is your hope, he is your hope. There's hope there, you know? Yes. So how did you, how did you get back to actually believing people? Yeah, that was tough. You know, what's so interesting about that, that you ask that is that it was actually uh, my husband now ah. um, who was part of my healing and bless his heart. He didn't know what he had signed up for. <laughs> he just thought I was cute and it was going to be wonderful. And it, it wasn't that way for the first five years because we had to unpack a lot, but it was through his love, his unconditional love and his generosity my husband is such like, he just exudes the generosity and the abundance and the love and the grace of heaven. And we didn't do it perfectly, but he was a big part of my journey. He was a big part um, of God's plan to bring me back into his plan and part of my redemption. Yeah. He was Jesus yeah. on earth for you. Yes. He it was you back to himself, right? Oh yes. Okay. So you trusted, you trusted again, um, you know, you started opening your heart again to other people only because you've seen that there's actually some people that are nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So believe me, yes. this is big, right? Melody, come on. I mean, yeah, we're laughing at it now, but man, I mean, no, it, listen, we are just joyful because we can talk about it now, but honestly, we are with you if you're going through misery because of all the accusations and all these judgments that has been put upon you. Listen, there's no, there is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So go back to Jesus and believe me, nobody is allowed to judge you. No, 
And no. you know what? Yeah, right. You coming from Melody? Go ahead, Melody. Come on. Well, Jesus has the last say, and you know, we get we get real caught up with the opinions of others. Right. And growing up, if you haven't had a lot of validation, if you grew up in a home where there wasn't a lot of love and it was more rules based it's, we're always wanting that validation. And that makes it really hard, yeah. but we have to realize that our validation comes from Christ alone and yeah. no one else. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's, what does he say about you? What yeah. has he promised you? Because that, that's where the good stuff is. That's where the abundance is. That's where the overflow is. Mm -hmm. It's in him. Mm -hmm. I, I first want to say hello to every, every person that that my 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 uh, my co labor uh, Janice from the Philippines is awake. <laughs> I'm saying hello to uh, those people. Well, this is going to be replayed anyway later, so this is, you know, this is safe. But uh, I just want to say hello to all that that um, that are here with us today. Okay, so um, how would you how how would you encourage somebody right now, Melody, who are so much in this, you know. Uh, they feel like they're in a rut, you know, and they're yes. just, they're in a pit where there's just no way, you know, the only thing that they can see are walls and they can't see the sun. They can't, they just can't. They're just so discouraged. How would you, how would you encourage them right now? That's good. You know, the first thing that I would say is, is find one thing. If it's just one thing, what can you be grateful for? Is it the fact that you woke up this morning? Perhaps mm -hmm. you are a single parent and you have a beautiful child. What can you be grateful for? What can you see that you have? Look for what you have. And I would say if you if you're if you're right now listening and you say I see nothing, look again. Ask yeah. Holy Spirit to help you. He will even help you to find what you can be grateful for. <laughs> That's he will. He's so he's so good. And just begin to turn into gratitude. When you see lack, turn into gratitude. Gratitude is a precursor for miracles. You yeah. want a miracle in your life, shift into gratitude. Right. It just happens that way. Like, and you know, and I understand what it's like to feel abandoned, to feel rejected, to see limitation, to feel like life has passed you by, to start yeah. looking at other people and thinking they did good. You know, they, they're in a great place and you're not there. I understand. And that's where I lived out of for years. Mm -hmm. For years. For yes. years. So how, how did you, um, how did you actually, did you actually tell yourself like David, you know, he, David encouraged himself in the Lord, but how, what does that look like? Wherein you journey, you journey telling yourself, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm victorious and I can dream again. How, yes. how, how did that, you know, how happen? did that work for me? How did I'm a work? writer and I like to journal. So I will often, and through this process, I would write down the dreams in my heart. I would just put them on paper and I would read them out loud. The things that I know that God has told me. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you have no dreams or you feel like God has told you nothing, go to scripture and find something that you really like and claim it for yourself because it's for you. And I would always go to Psalm 15 where it says, the Lord is my chosen portion in my cup. Mm -hmm. You hold my lot. Yeah. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. And indeed I have a beautiful inheritance mm. and I would draw that out. What does that look like? The lines have fallen for me and I have an inheritance. I have a territory that's been given to me and Jesus is my cup. And when Jesus is your cup, it's overflowing. It's mm. running down the street. You're making puddles everywhere because it's for you, but it's not about you. No, it's not about you. It's for everyone around you. Oh man, that's it. You know? Most of the time you see your purposes when you start going out and just stop self, self, self-centered, you know, being selfless is what Jesus has actually shown to yes. every one of us, right? It's, yes. you know, and that's where we find joy anyway. That's when you know, aha, I now I really have the key. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, um, Melody, how, how did it look also um, in your journey where you actually started loving yourself? Yeah, that's that's really good. And that didn't come <laughs> until later on. You know, it's easier to love others. It's really yeah. hard to love yourself. Mm -hmm. um, my husband, again, was a big part of that. Mm. And God just really began to, I remember when we were um, early in our marriage, God began to really like, show me, like, listen to what your husband is saying. Listen to how he serves you. Listen, look at how he loves you. 
this is how I love you. This is what mm. I've been trying to communicate to you. Mm. My love is unconditional. It is endless. It wow. is always there. I'm always present. I'm always for you. There's always grace for you. When you act like an idiot, I'm in love with you. When you <laughs> fall short, I'm in love with you, Melody. And he just began to really speak to me through my husband because I had never known a love like that. Right. Right. Wow. So did you actually like, <clears throat> how, you know, do you, did you start like, you know, telling, looking at yourself in the mirror and say, okay, you are beautiful. You know, you don't need to be, you know, anorexic or whatever it is that, that you have to go and change. So, I mean, because you see, Melanie, there is quite a lot of people who are confused of the identity that they go, that, that, that they believe in only because of what happened to them. Right. <clears throat> right. I believe right. it. I believe in, you know, God says love him first and then love yourself so you can love others. And most of the time it's always the other way around. Yes. And I feel like in poverty mentality, it's very hard to love yourself when you feel like you don't have anything and you don't, yes. you don't, you don't mean to anything. So when you are saying that, you know, uh, your husband mm -hmm. actually showed you that love and showed you how beautiful you are, how attractive you are, that opened your eyes, but for you to actually believe that there must have been something so that and then you said that as the voice of the lord telling you look at how he loves on you look at how he looks at you did was that like a, a one day thing that, that your eyes the scales of your eyes because if i'm gonna look at you i'm like girl you're hot <laughs> And we're live on Facebook. I don't care what they say, but you're beautiful. I've seen you. You know, you're tall. You're you're crazy gorgeous. And but when you were younger, I'm sure you're more crazier, gorgeouser. But <laughs> but you didn't. You never felt it, right? It's, oh it's, no. Oh my gosh, that's what I mean. You know, I'm like, I mean, I when I was a kid, I was told I was like ugly, ugly. Like literally, you're ugly like that so i'm like so for the longest time i had to go and tell tell him, renew my mind with what god says you're beautifully and wonderfully made you're yes i'm wonderfully made so with yes. you how did that look like i mean okay, okay. Well, so i just had a okay this actually is really funny now now that you framed it that way but when so god and i began to engage that you're perfect you're beautiful you're fearfully and wonderfully made you know for years i walked with my head down I wouldn't make eye contact with anyone. And so God began to tell me about four years ago, I will, I would like dress down so I wouldn't bring attention to myself because I don't like attention or I didn't. And so he would say, I want you to dress up and I want you to begin to look people in the eye and to get comfortable <laughs> with that. Do you know how hard that was for me? I would rather, I don't know, run a hundred miles than walk down the street fully made up because I'm tall. So if I put on heels and I do full makeup and full jewelry, People look at me and that's really hard. <laughs> or it was. She looked like a superstar. <laughs> but I was so uncomfortable with attention because I, I didn't feel like I was worthy of it. I didn't know, I, I just couldn't engage with that. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and that really helped. And just realizing that I was inspiring other women and that by hiding, I was helping no one. Yeah. And so I began to see how people would engage with me mm -hmm. when I began to show up in the truth and in the power of who I was and who God created me to be. Wow. Wow. Oh my gosh. Especially when God <laughs> started telling me as well, go live on Facebook. I'm like, I can't even look at myself, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. I mean, it's hard. Right? You know, I, I actually encourage, uh, you know, people to come and go to the mirror because most of the time when they do something in the mirror, they want to go and improvise something. Right. And right. there was there was a time when I said, you look at yourself in the mirror and you say, I like your eyebrows. I like your nose. I like your eyes because you have just cursed yourself many times over. Oh, my eyebrows not really nice today. Oh, my, you know, and mm -hmm. I had to, you know, like. I have to also love myself in that manner where I can look at myself in the mirror and say, oh, okay, Jesus made that eye so beautiful. Oh, your eyes are beautiful. I have to talk to myself, which is really crazy, but you know, because, because you know, I, I was told differently. So I have to go and, you know what? I'm going to partner with God with what he says and be able to go and, you know, change my way of thinking because right. at the end of the who can you help when you're yourself when you yourself are not helped so yes. okay 
<laughs> this is getting really more exciting than <laughs> now with your relationship with your one year affair <laughs> to now relationship of being with him for the longest time and seeing God in that how can you encourage younger generation or even old like you know that that had that a broken relationship with with you know just because they got impregnated or whatever you know they got divorced they separated for for other th reasons um right. how can you how can you encourage them to actually like not you know curse their situation oh i don't want any men anymore in my life oh they're all like you know not generalizing things that you know you can actually have a good relationship and 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 settle that old relationship put it in the heart of god how you know please tell them encourage them how that how they can actually come out of that way of thinking. Yeah, that's that's huge, you know, and I think we have to create space for Jesus to work in our lives. And so instead of hanging on to the bitterness, we have to release the bitterness. We have to release the disappointment to the father. And I mean, release it, right? And, and I mean, when we let that it. release it, like let it go and, and forget who did what and who said what and what didn't work out let like and a good practical way to do this is to get a piece of paper and write down every hurt every word that was spoken against you mm -hmm. every ugly thing that was done every betrayal every lie write it out and then set it on fire yeah and it's done it's done you've pulled it out of you you've put it on paper you've dealt with yeah. it and then what you've done essentially is create space within you yeah. that yeah. jesus can come and redeem all the brokenness yeah. all the disappointment mm -hmm. and he can fill you with the good things that he had for you he can mm -hmm. bring you back into plan a and this is what is so exciting ruth is that we forget god is outside of time and we live in a timeline right we hold ourselves to my 20s my 30s my 40s but the truth of it if god is outside of time and we are made in his image this is something i'm learning we are outside of time and therefore what has always been available to us and to you before the foundation of the world is still available we I'm haven't ruined it we I'm can't there. change it we can't make it go away it's still there fully accessible regardless of how old you are or how young you are regardless of what you've done or haven't done regardless of the good choices or the wrong choices you feel like you've made you cannot screw up your destiny right exactly and the fact that you you know you're right i always say this as well to to uh to inner healing uh, uh people that i go with you cannot be filled with freshness if you're so full Yes, your yes. heart cannot be filled with new love if your heart is filled with bitter, bitter love. You know, you have to get it, get rid of that. <laughs> exactly what I say to them yesterday. I was just praying for somebody in Australia. Exactly what I just said. Write it all down. <laughs> one write it down. At a time. Write them yeah. all down. Sometimes four pages in one person. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> what they said, what they, you know but it's gone now, it's out of your system, it's on the paper, burn it and give it as a sacrifice to Jesus. Yes. And it's just going to go fill you up with freshness. I love that. And I love what you said, God will always bring you to plan A. Yes. He cannot, there's no, I mean, there's no other way for God to do that. Why? Because that's him, <laughs> he's good. <laughs> He's so good. He's That's so, so awesome. good. And we don't give him enough credit. Ah, we think yes. we think that we're in control of our life. But when we submit our control, he brings us right back. He redeems all the things. All the things. Yeah. All the things. Yeah. And he you you know, he's totally out of time. That's why it, it says in Matthew 6, you know, FOMO, you know, fear of missing out. Don't fear. <laughs> of missing out anything because he has it all planned out. He knew you're gonna go and screw up on this thing. He has already a plan for that to be, and he redeemed it. The thing is, it's done. The cross is empty. He resurrected. There's life in every situation. Amen. You know, Melody, right now, uh, there's quite a lot of people I know who doesn't even know where to get their next meal. And it hurts my heart. And for us, 
somehow who, you know, we, we have our next meal, you know, for now. And thank you, God. Um, and, and, and what we are is we, we, you know, we know how it is for them not to have. So therefore we become, you know, the help as well. But for them, you know, who are going through that for a while now, they start to not believe that God is their providence. You see, they always just look for people to go and help them. Um, how can you encourage them that God provides every single day? That is good. And from being in a place, sometimes not knowing where my help, my provision, my food was coming from, when you got to the end of the food stamps, but we had more need, God has always shown up. Yeah. He may not be on your time schedule, but he is always on time. Yeah. He has never, ever, ever left me. He has never forsaken me. And there were times I wondered, God, if you don't show up, I don't know if I'll make it. Literally. Yeah. I have, have no gas in my tank and I have to get to work. Yeah. But he has shown up for me Ruth, miraculously. Sometimes through other people, sometimes through just crazy miracles, little bitty miracles. Yeah. But it's it's acknowledging him when he does show up and partnering with him and and just speaking that faith, kind of resurrecting your faith yeah. and reminding yourself of the goodness of the Lord, yeah. reminding yourself how he does show up. Yeah. If, if you can't remember, but maybe one time in your life where God has showed up, thank him for that one time. He right. begin yeah. to meditate on that one time, begin to dance and celebrate that one time. Right. And you're unlocking right. God's ability to intercede and intervene where you are right now. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing too big for God. Yeah, and you know, the Bible says, you know, think of th thoughts that are good and lovely. Not that you're denying things, you, you know, you can't deny it anyway. <laughs> it's <laughs> literally there, right? Yes, yes. But honestly, it's the heart posture. Yes. And it's the heart that really, like, once our hearts are, are you know, con our, once our hearts are contaminated with negativity, that's what's going to come out anyway. That's what you see. But once you yes. find full of light, that's also what you see. And yes. it's, isn't it so exciting that, you know, God will walk with you every single day. And that's the excitement of life anyway, right? It's the yes. idea of seeing God, you know, just saw you through for the day. Because even if, you know, you have a lot of food, it could, you could be extremely sad. Yes. So poor. Because yes. No, the living, loving father who is actually the true satisfaction of a heart. <sighs> so Melody, <laughs> <laughs> now, now that you are a reformer, for sure, because, uh, because now you understood what it is to have an identity with the living God the living king, the loving father. Now you have um, a different perception of people. You're actually there for them. They don't, it doesn't matter what they say to you. You are at least there for them. Um, you, your baby has grown up so beautifully. You know, you have a beautiful family. How can you actually encourage like broken homes right now? to, you know, actually see, because sometimes when you're, you're, you're having, you know, arguments and all that all the time, you just want to go and give up, right? Can you just encourage them as well? I feel like that's also a key you have, you know, and, and, you know, getting that, um, getting that pressure off the cooker. <laughs> no, it's huge. And I've been there um, as a single mom, I've been there in a bad marriage and you, you have to remember God is your source and your provision for everything. And here's the big truth. He loves your children more than you do. He wants for them more than you do. And so if you can just step into all the strength and the faith that you can and hang on to what God has promised mm -hmm. you, you know, I have, I have, there were times when all I could do, I would look at my son and I would hurt because I felt like I caused his pain that wow. now he had to grow up for eight years without a father and the father that he had 
wasn't very faithful to him. And I, I felt that responsibility and that pressure on top of everything else. And so I understand it's a hard place. Or if you're in a bad marriage where you're, you don't feel like your children are safe, you know, I would just begin to speak the word over my situation. And that's all I had. In the place of my father shall be my sons and they shall be as princes upon the earth. In the place of my father shall God positions my children. You know, my children shall be taught by the Lord and great shall be their peace. Amen. The situation is not teaching my children. The Lord is teaching my children. Amen. Right. It's higher Amen. than tap into what's higher than your situation and turn your faith towards that and realize that God is on your side fighting for you. And he has a plan for you. He has a plan of redemption, not just for you, but for your entire family to bring you back into healing, into wholeness. Right. It's very important. I know it's, it's, it's been used up so many times, Jeremiah 29, 11, where God actually, his plan actually is to prosper you and not to harm you. It's his plan is actually to give you a good future. But the problem is we don't trust him. That's right. We don't take time to actually give our lives to him. We don't, we, we feel like we can always do things on our own. We can't. We don't even know whether we're alive tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> whether you're going to wake up. I mean, who gives you the breath of life? No one right. else. Can. He knows exactly. He numbered the days. He knows all that. And so, yeah, this false responsibility is really heavy. It's what we call false responsibility, thinking that, you know, oh, because they mess up, so they're because I mess up. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we all mess up anyway. <laughs> Thank you, we have a God. <laughs> and we can live in a supernatural wherein we can actually speak his promises and actually come to pass because nothing, yes. you know, nothing is void in the Lord. When he says so, he is. So he's a king. Nothing can break his word. So if he says that he wants to prosper you, he will prosper you. Even if, but come on, you know, it's a process. Everything is a process. When you grow, you don't grow all, all, all of a sudden you, you were born and then you have white hair. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You grow like one day at a time. There's a process. There's a process. And I love that, you know, uh, uh, Melody, I love uh, your vulnerability and I love your openness. And I love uh, that you would want to actually, you know, give your testimony so that other people can actually say, oh, I'm not on my own. Oh, I can actually take, grab that promise that Melody went through so that I can have it myself. Oh my goodness. So Melody, we would like to ask um, for an impartation. You know, um, just uh, an impartation of just uh, being able to be grateful all the time. You know, you have you have such a thankful heart. It's just beautiful. Um, at the same time, you know, a redemption, um, not redemption, but, you know, just you being able to go and see things differently, <laughs> you know, and you not stopping the dream. You know, I feel like today is a good day to dream again. Yes. Dream again, yes. Right? You know, God has not, you know, those dreams are not actually your dream. It's God's dream for you. Yes. When there is a dream that God has given you, there's a provision for that dream. So don't stop dreaming. That's don't right. get too comfortable. Come on, dream, dream bigger. Our God <laughs> yes. is bigger, right? Yes. So Melody, I thank you for your time. And I would love you to go and just speak life over everybody that's listening now or later or 10 years after because this actually yes. going to be you know a you know a legacy for for yeah for the people yes yes okay father i just thank you for everyone listening today everyone watching who has watched who will watch and I just pray, Father, for a supernatural grace. I just release a supernatural grace on their lives to look again. Yeah. We just say, look again, Holy Spirit, and that you would open their eyes to see beyond, mm. to see what you have promised them, to see what is available, that they would see more and not less, mm. that they wouldn't see limitations, but that they would begin to see the possibility and the opportunity that you have set before them. Yeah. And I just ask that gratitude, Father, would rise up in their hearts yeah. and that they could not help but being grateful, that they could not help but be filled with joy at what you have provided. Yeah. 
and that they would see the provision and the grace on their life even now. And Father, I thank you for the dreams that you have imparted to every listener. And I just call forth those dreams and I say, rise up dreams, rise up. And I release everyone listening to dream again and to dare to dream bigger and to dare to dream beyond anything that you have dreamed and to ask God for it and to be bold. And Father, I pray that you would just begin to engage and interact with every listener, even in these next few days, that they would know that you are working on their behalf. We thank you for signs, for encounters, for connections, for new relationships. We thank you for doors being opened. Father, as you awaken your people to their dreams, as they move into gratitude, as they create space for you to work on their behalf. We are so grateful, God, that you are so much bigger than us and that you are the source of all of our provision, that you are the source of redemption, that you are the source of our joy. Because God, you are our chosen portion. You are our cup. And the lines have fallen for us in really good places. And we are excited. Father, we love you. We thank you. You are the faithful one. You are a good God. And we just thank you for your goodness that overflows and that we get to partake from your cup. We love you, Jesus, and we bless you. And I bless all my brothers and my sisters listening today in your name, Jesus. Let it be so. Um, (laughs) I honor you, Melody. And we say, you know, from the beautiful, powerful women ministry family, more to you more to you, more to your baby and the babies to come and more to your family (laughs) and stay like a superstar. (laughs) Oh, Ruth, thank you so much. This has been such a fun time. I really appreciate you having me on with you today. Blessings. I mean, we'll have to go do, you know what? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to plug it now anyway. <laughs> you know, I'm going to be doing um, walk through uh, poverty to prosperity with Melody Dowler. So guys, watch out for it. I'm going to have, have we're going to have that soon. I know. In Jesus name. <laughs> <laughs> you have Thank nothing you. to say anymore. Thank you. <laughs> say amen. <laughs> See you guys soon. Yeah, okay. Bye. bye.